Hi everyone, it's Karen here from Dark Moon Emporium and today I'm giving an overview of some of the features in Xtool Creative Space version 2 beta. Let's begin by opening up X2 Creative Space. And here I am on the uh, on the start screen. Uh, now I've already created uh, an account with X2 and I've logged into my account. Uh, the first time that you use this, if you want to, if you choose to, you can set that up for yourself. Along here, I have some of the projects that I've been previously working on um, but we're going to start with a new project so at the moment I'm connected to my F1 um, however I also have a D1 Pro and what I'm going to do here is uh, something that I could not previously do and that is open up uh, I'm going to call it a new session a new tab I'm going to come to my uh, device menu here and I'm going to click on devices available and as you can see I have uh, the Xtool D1 Pro uh, I have two because I have it uh, connected via Wi-Fi and by USB. So I'm going to click on connect device. And I want to connect via USB just to show you that on the Wi-Fi side of it, I have the D1 Pro and the X2 uh, F1. Uh, it's been a long day. <laughs> And I am burbling, never mind. Okay, so I'm going to select X1, D1. It gives me a little bit of warning saying, are you really want, sure you want to do that? Because, you know, you could lose some work. You, I'm going to switch, so I am sure. So, over on the right-hand side of my screen here, I have um, a few things to look at. So, I have framing and process which uh, are we've been using like as, lo as long as we've been using an X-Tool laser, haven't we? Um, and I got a nice little picture of my D1 Pro, so just in case I wasn't sure which machine I was using. Uh, I have a mode menu, so this gives me access to uh, all of the modes for the D1, which are processed on the flat surface, uh, use a rotary, to use the slide extension if I have one of the kits that makes my uh, my machine virtually twice as big and screen preparation which allows me to um, to cut uh, to laser the uh, X tool screen print print for the screen printer which I do have uh, I have a materials menu here so I have a a, a list of different uh, different items that the uh, that the machine may be able to laser for me I haven't got any project on the uh, on the canvas at the moment so I'm not going to select the material processing path I can let the X tool decide which is the best way of working on things or I can define how the order in which I want things to run myself again I have nothing on my screen at the moment so there's nothing to um, there's nothing to plan there's no processing path to, to worry about and my processing start point so here I have relative coordinates or um, if I click on that I have absolute coordinates relative coordinates starts your project from where you manually place the laser head uh, where you place that module um, the absolute coordinates starts your 
uh, starts your project, starts burning your project from home. Okay, which is up here, zero, zero. Right, okay. So before we switch over to the F1 and see what's different there, um, there's a couple of other things here that we want to look at. So if I click on the three dots, I can uh, go to the user guide, which will take me to Xtools website. Um, and I can go away and I can read all about the software there or I can go to device settings. So I have the basic information, which tells me things like the, uh, the serial number and so forth of my machine. Um, but what I want is working parameters. So this is where I set my preferences. I can position my uh, D1 with the red cross or with the laser spot. I turned off red cross within a couple of weeks of having the machine because I couldn't figure out the offset and it was giving me fits. Um, but if I do choose the red cross, then I can also set out what the, the offset is, okay? Flame alarm, I've got that turned off because my D1 is in a sunny window and the thing that sets off the flame alarm is bright light. However, I do have it set so that it stops when it's moved. So if I accidentally bump into it, um, it, it, it kind of, you know, it will turn off, it's a, you know, it, it's a safety function, is what I'm trying to say. And I've also got limit switches turned on. And I have export elements on the canvas as G-code. That is more than I uh, actually want to get into at this stage, so I'm just going to leave that where it is. Okay. So I'm now going to go over to the F1. And over here, I have a nice little picture of the F1. I've got the same object and processing drop-downs. I've got the same user-defined material drop-down. Um, my mode options are to process on the base plate. Again, to use the rotary to remove the base plate. So if I wanted to take my F1 and stand it, um, let's say I wanted to engrave something on the corner of a table, for example, I could just pick up my F1 and plonk it onto whatever it is I wanted to engrave, and uh, uh, I would be able to do that and use the slide extension. So the slide extension for the F1 is the one that is, it, it's, it, it's about four inches wide by about, Oh, I don't know, 18 inches processing uh, area. Uh, I do have a slide extension. I have yet to use it other than to kind of set it up and, and do a test cut. So that is something else that I want to uh, want to look at in the future. Again, processing path, same options. Okay, auto planned or user defined. I don't have an option to uh, to go from absolute coordinates because with the F1, it always starts in the center. You know, it's a, it's a Galvo system. It works by mirrors. Uh, there is, is no module to move. So that's not appropriate. So it's not there. The other one that we have is, uh, uh, is the thickness setting. Um, I've never used autofocus, but it is there as an option. So if I go into my three little dots here to my device settings, again, same thing. I've got the, uh, the basic info about my F1 and the settings though are slightly different. So I've got, uh, again, I've got flame alarm. I've got that turned off. Stops when moved, good idea. Stops when the enclosure's opened. Okay, so also, uh, also a good idea. However, if I were using something that um, it kind of sticks out the side, I would need to turn that off. Yeah. So again, if I was using it with the slide extension, I can't pull the enclosure all the way down. Or if I was using something that I've rested on the base plate, but it's uh, it extends to one side or the pencils for example if i was engraving pencils um, most ordinary size pencils are too big they're too long 
to fit on the base plate. So I'm going to turn that off, even though it seems like a good idea. Infrared ray preheat. I'm going to turn that one on because uh, this will allow the infrared to kind of warm up. Um, sometimes when you use the, the infrared laser, if, particularly if, if it's cold, if it's, if it's, you know, the weather's cold, it's winter or, you know, it, it's just in a chilly area. It takes a little while for the infrared to reach kind of operating temperature. So by turning on that option, it preheats the, the laser so that it, it starts, you know, at optimum performance straight away. Buzzer reminders. I, I don't know anyone who turns those on. Uh, we practically had a party when that was released as a feature because the, the 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 buzzer it says buzzer it's a beep okay if you haven't got an F one it's a beep and it's a loud beep so we we turn that one off uh, if you're using an air purifier which I am it will continue to work for a set number of seconds after you've finished I've left it at the default ten. Again, you've got export elements as G code and you've got uh, the ability to. E to export the work log. Okay, so those are the, the features that are unique to the, uh, the F1. So if I come along over here, the next thing that I've got on that top toolbar is the hand tool. If I click on that, that allows me to move the whole canvas. If I want to go back to selecting objects on the canvas I click that little green arrow and we've got the undo and redo buttons there uh, this tells me I'm on canvas one more about that when we get into canvases and along here is the main menu so we have file which are things you'd expect new open import close save save as rename export as SVG edit um, so we have undo and redo, which are greyed out at the moment because I haven't done anything. Uh, copy, paste, cut, delete, select all. Help. Uh, the help centre will take you to the, uh, the, T, the X tool website. Which is a bit slow because I turned off, uh, I turned off my internet browser. Okay. Let me quit that and the user guide and honestly if you read the user guide you don't need me so this is the user guide for the F1 and uh, let me skip that and you can find this beginner's guide in help that helpfully popped up there so next I'm going to have a look at the icons down this side of the screen uh, I'll stay on the F1 canvas because why not? So the first uh, the first icon is image and that allows me to import an image from file. I just choose where my my image is and I choose whichever image I want to to bring in. The text icon um, we'll come back to that at a later date but that's how you enter text. The Basic shape, so you have the line, the rectangle and the circle. I do feel that calling it a circle is a little bit misleading because really it's an ellipse. To get a circle you have to hold down the shift key. The, uh, the vector, which allows me to create, give me a, so I can just create a vector shape with straight lines. up to now has been uh, uh, pretty limiting but um, just wait and see because things have uh, things have moved on with vector editing the the shape menu so we have the usual the basic shapes the borders plants animals festival patterns parts and other that's the same as was in the previous version AI, uh, this takes you to the XArt menu, um, which is Xtools uh, Artificial Intelligence 
interface. Yeah. Uh, and then the one at the bottom, application. So let's have a look at this one. So this is where the arrays have gone to. So we have the grid array, the circular array, material test array, and code generation. So we'll, again, we'll come back to that in a future video. Nearly done. So we're down at the bottom here. This is our layer and object list. It's not doing anything at the moment because I don't have any layers uh, or any objects. That's going to be my next video. And along at the bottom here, I have the, um, the zoom menu, the size menu. So I can fit my canvas to the width. I can make it a thousand percent. I can uh, fit to height or fit on screen, which is where I usually use it. And I can go in and out with the plus and minus buttons. To be absolutely honest, I'm so used to zooming in and out of a screen by hitting a command and plus or command and minus or command and zero to take me back to where I started. I tend to forget all about those, but they're there if you want to use them. And last of all, we have the help and that will take us to Xtool support or the user guide. We've already had a look at the user guide, Xtool support takes me to the Xtool website. So let me come out of that. Okay, so I'm going to stop there because that's quite a lot to, uh, to take in. My next video, I think, all right, don't hold me to this, but in the next video, I think I want to look at, um, at layers and objects and text. And if you found this video helpful, then please do hit the, the like button. You know where it is. Thank you very much for staying with me uh, until the bitter end. And do come back and see me again sometime soon, won't you? Bye bye. <laughs>